Welcome to episode 165 of the Twim Show. This is your host Sajid Islam and today I'll be going over the notable news and updates from the digital marketing space from the week of June 12th through 16, 2023. Also keep in mind that you know today's show is going to be very short just because there wasn't a, a whole lot of updates to share which is a good thing as well as a bad thing. Uh, I just want to bring you the marketing updates that um, actually will move the needle in your business. With that, uh, I want to quickly jump into LinkedIn. LinkedIn has announced they're going to remove carousel posts, profile videos, and in-image links. They're citing... um, low engagement or low what is it called let's see uh low traction right uh if you ask me a carousel post was something they copied from what is it called instagram while carousel post may work well in instagram i think linkedin is a social is a professional platform it never really made sense but it's one of those me too features that was copied by the linkedin theme without proper marketing research uh, to me that's like a me too function uh, the same goes for something like um, you know profile videos profile videos facebook had it inst- i think at one point or instagram had it i don't remember who had it first and then LinkedIn, oh, wow, we are lacking creativity. Let's go copy that, right? That sounds cool. Uh, obviously, Facebook slash uh, Instagram, whoever had it, dropped it, and now LinkedIn is dropping it. Last, uh, they are saying the link in image, uh, they're going to drop that again. Um, that seemed like a very cool feature. However, uh, you know, LinkedIn is a very textual platform. It doesn't really make sense over there. Uh, I mean, you know, if you compare LinkedIn and Instagram, they're two different, uh, you know, platforms. It makes more sense to have, like, you know, I guess an image link in an image in Instagram even though Instagram doesn't have that ability, but for LinkedIn doesn't make any sense because you have this image and then you have this post. So you can always uh, put um, uh, links in the post. With Instagram, you know, you can put an image, but you cannot, you can put link in the comments or description, but that is unclickable. So you got to understand how this platform works. And this just tells me that the people they have in the product management are really like, La- they're not fit to be product management. Right? They're not analyzing these products and app functions and functionalities and features uh, critically. Right now, if you ask me, uh, I'm glad that they're taking it off, but at the same time, imagine how much resources and time, money, and everything that they have spent in building these features in the first place. Right? Again, thank God LinkedIn is a big business for small businesses. It doesn't make any sense. Okay, uh, talking about that, let's jump into Instagram. Instagram uh, broadcast channels are pretty much now here for everyone. Uh, It's worldwide for everyone to use. Creators can use broadcast channels to send one-way messages to their followers with text, photos, videos, polls, and voice messages. Now, let me take a step back and say what it is. If you go to WhatsApp and you can create uh, WhatsApp groups or WhatsApp channels where, you know, it's an organizer uh, only specific announcements. So for example, I was recently at an event where the organizers had this WhatsApp group with all the attendees of that event were obviously welcome to where asked or welcomed, were invited to join the channel, that group. And then the uh, official organizers would basically, uh, sorry, not official organizers, the organizers would put post announcements, official announcements in that channel so that it just goes out to everyone. Now, obviously, WhatsApp is owned by Instagram. And what Facebook slash Meta has realized that, you know, what a lot of people are using what Instagram and Facebook, but they're not really creating and engaging with content as much as before. Probably privacy is a concern. That's what they think. So with that, but they said, okay, fine, we are going to create, you know, this group within Instagram where you can now DM messages to your followers or to your, you know, whatever group you create within Instagram and you can DM them and you can send all this stuff. So that's the concept. Now, I'm not an Instagram person, so if you ask me, I mean, I don't really see the value. Uh, Especially, you know, the challenge with Instagram is that, uh, again, with broadcast channels, it works on uh, their app. It doesn't work on desktop. So if you ask me, i rather use WhatsApp uh, broadcast channels or WhatsApp group with announcements just because, you know, it's much more easier. They have a WhatsApp desktop. So I kind of sometimes don't understand what they're doing at Instagram, right? And even with LinkedIn, I just covered like, you know, they are just like in both places. Why Instagram doesn't have a desktop 
app or an iPad app baffles me still to date, right? If you look at the iPad share, the tablet share of the market or desktop, you know how much more use and engagement they would get if they were used to, they would only have a Instagram desktop app. Uploading videos, posting is going to be so much easier. If you think about it, how much of that video is being created on a desktop? Right. For me, at least, most of our videos, even though we create it, we would still bring it to desktop to add special effects, things like that. You cannot really edit a video on your like small smartphone. I sometimes feel like this in Facebook meta has all these smart people and are they like, they're so blind, to obvious. And from us, like for me, at least, we would transfer the video over to our desktop, Mac. Of course, there's AirPlay, but you know, it adds steps and then we will edit it and then we will have to transfer it over into the uh, phone to upload it. Because if we upload it from uh, the business studio, it's just a painful process overall. So anyway, I digress and I kind of rant, but I think I hope you're on it with me. Let me know what you think. I think it would be such a game changer if they were to just build an Instagram desktop app. And like creation, content creation is going to go up the roof. That's my point. What do you think? Okay, <clears throat> next up, uh, talking about innovation, let's look at TikTok. TikTok launches an AI ad script generator that can create scripts for ads in a matter of seconds. Right, the script generator is available for all TikTok Creative Center users with a desktop TikTok for business account. Advertisers simply have to enter in some basic information about the service or products they are offering, and the tool will generate vid various video scripts with hooks, scenes, calls to action, visual, visual, visual audio cues. This is amazing. And on the flip side, I read somewhere two weeks ago that you know Meta's first uh, generative AI is going to be one that will help you to create emojis. Voila! Do you see where this is going? It seems like Meta with their air of efficiency, cost cutting and flattening of this management layer has basically demoralized, demotivated their whole whatever, whoever is left. And they're just all running around trying to uh, save their life, save their job and just not really building anything. Uh, I feel bad for Meta, but you know, it is what it is. Um, but I feel like there is a lot more innovations coming out of TikTok than there is from um, Meta. Okay, uh, just so that you know, the script generator is a free tool and advertisers can run their inquiry as many times as they like. However, it's important note to note that there is a risk of inaccurate information being published when using AI-generated content. TikTok has warned digital marketers that they should not rely solely on AI generated scripts and that they are solely responsible for ensuring that the content is accurate and complies with applicable laws and regulations. Now, if you do not pay attention to what I just read from the show notes, uh, I really hope you do. There is a video on my personal channel, right? You can go see and I, it will point out some of the bad things that happens when you use generative AI, right? And there's a very good case uh, there are from, my, from my own personal experience. So if you really want to see that, you have to head over to my personal channel um, on YouTube. I believe it's with Sajid. Uh, and I'm not trying to promote that, you know, trying to build like an audience for my gen channel. I just record my stuff, my life stuff in there. And that kind of, you know, proves that what TikTok is saying is really true. Okay, so you need to be careful. Now, moving on from TikTok into Google's, Google's has a new search, a spam report form, and you can also do like bulk submission. This is whenever you search something and you find something inaccurate, clickbaity, something like that, you can submit it. The link is in our show notes page, but remember, use it carefully. Do not use it to um, complain about your <laughs> competitor, although you can do it. You can get them into trouble, but I don't want you to get into trouble, okay, because I'm pretty sure you will have to log in from your Google account. I haven't used it. Um, but please be ethical. Uh, there are other ways to win the game of business. Uh, please be ethical. Uh, so if you see some spam, uh, click links, uh, viruses, malicious, you know, anything else, just go ahead and submit it. And talking about bad, being a bad actor, Google is suing, uh, suing scammers for creating fake businesses and reviews. Uh, so basically they filed a lawsuit against a group of scammers who created fake business and fake reviews on Google Maps and business profiles. 
Uh, they have created apparently uh, 350 fraudulent business profiles and over 14,000 fake reviews. So folks, all that means is that Google knows just because they don't take an action today doesn't mean they will not take an action tomorrow. And I hope you are not one of those uh, business owners who have basically taken service of them. Sometimes, you know, these fake people or bad people are going to come and say, you know what, we're going to get you all these things. And it sounds so great and excited. We just like, like, want to jump and get into the results. But remember, nothing in life comes easy. Um, so if it sounds too good to be true, it is too good to be true. So please do your due diligence. Now, with that, <clears throat> the last and the biggest update of this week has Google has updated uh, margin center policies. Uh, so a lot of cha things have changed. This is a bit complicated, so I will try my best to go through it as much as possible. Um, then obviously you are welcome to read the show notes. The other thing I want you to know is that if something doesn't make sense and you need directions and guidance, please feel free to reach out um, because you, know, you don't want to be... Uh, um, get affected by it especially if you're relying on local listing or uh, free listings okay number one is where google is expanding the use of shipping cost uh, shipping cost was something mandatory in the u.s now they've added like a few other countries some in europe uh, european economic uh, zone as well as other beyond like i think india and brazil and some other country so go ahead and check the show notes and you click the link and it will tell you what countries this is in effect since june 15th uh, for eu there's a new certification attribute uh, to describe product certifications such as energy efficiency ratings again my show is focused Focus towards US users, so I'm not going to go d too deep into it. But if you happen to be from the EU uh, or a country outside the US, go ahead and click the show notes and you will find that more information. The next one is that you know, product quantity attribute was still required in the past and uh, availability attribute was optional. Now they're changing it. Uh, so availability is not required, product quantity is uh, optional. Availab availability says in stock, out of stocks, pre order, whatever it is. Now there are a few uh, <coughs> attributes and you need to specify that first. So if you're not using <coughs> the right attribute, of course, Google is going to stop showing your product. Uh, to search listing. So this is something very important. Uh, again, if you are playing the e-commerce game, you need to be uh, careful of this one. And this goes into effect from June 15th. The other thing that you need to do is expiration date. Starting July 2023, you can use expiration date to attribute to stop showing a product on a specific date. So for example, if you have a promotion um, going on just for July 4th, which is the upcoming holiday in the US, you could just say, okay, this is a promotion on that page or even the ad page, you can set as metadata, uh, sorry, uh, structured data. And then you could just say expression date July 4th, uh, 2023, that on the 5th onwards, Google is going to stop showing it, right? And beginning September 2023, product that misuse out of stock availability will be disapproved. Uh, basically, in the past, if you wanted to uh, stop showing an ad or a product um, for whatever reason, you would play around with the out of stock availability, right? Google is saying, please don't do that. Uh, what we want you to use is the pause. Right, we want to use the pro pause attribute. Uh, this was in introduced last year, and what the pause attribute is going to do is it's going to temporarily stop sh your products from showing. So these are the most important ones. One is the pause attribute, the availability attribute, uh, the expiration date, and then of course the shipping cost. If I hope you're already using it, and then what else? The last one is the quantity. Yeah the quantity attribute. Right? These are the five most important things that you need to be uh, concerned about. Uh, if you are e an e-commerce product who wants to sell to uh, a local, or let me check my show notes. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> you are local listings or basically um, free listings. Okay, with that folks, that's it for this week in marketing. Now you know everything to be in the know. This is your Sajid Islam signing off. Until next week, take care. Bye-bye.